Today I'm here in this space of excellence, hearing these inspiring remarks from all of these incredibly gifted and talented people. And I'm about to give you some counterintuitive advice. I want to invite you to go out and do something badly, all right? And even more than doing something badly, here's the key, do something badly and keep on doing it. What do I mean by this? Well, from the age when we're, oh, I don't know, in our culture, 12, 13, we begin to feel that it's, it's too late to try something new, all right? We're embarrassed at that age to be beginners at something, right? We're impatient. We have high standards. And we're afraid of looking foolish. We hesitate. And often we don't take something on. And I just want to tell you today that if you have a little patience with yourself, if you're willing to try something and do it badly, if you're willing to be foolish, that you can learn some amazing things. So a little story. About nine years ago, I decided that I wanted to learn how to draw. Now, I hadn't drawn since middle school. I took pictures, I knew people who drew, other people drew, loved drawing, did not draw myself. I couldn't draw. So I talked to people I trusted, and they said the way to learn how to draw, the best way to learn how to draw is to draw something every day. So I thought, okay, I can do that. Two days after Christmas, I went out, and I bought myself a little sketchbook, and I went into the bookstore coffee shop, and I sat down and took out a pen and I drew a picture. I drew my cup of coffee. There it is. And I drew it in ink and I wrote the date on the page. And the next day I turned the page and I drew a bag that was in the house. Nothing important, nothing special. Third day, I draw a picture of my shoe. And I really don't like the drawing. It's a bad drawing, I think. And I almost cut the page out of the book or draw an X through it. I don't do that, but I still, I write on the page what's wrong with the drawing, all the proportions that are out of, and the hesitancy and the, the stuff that, that wasn't working for me. And I very nearly discontinued the project at that moment. And yet I took a step back and I said, wait a second. There is no end to the things that will be wrong with my drawing. I am always, no matter how much, how good I get at drawing, I'm, there's always going to be something wrong with it. And so I decided I couldn't criticize. So I scribbled out, you can see, I scribbled out the little part of the criticism there. And the next day I turned the page and made another drawing. And so I made three rules for myself at the beginning of this project. One was draw every day. The other was don't erase, commit. And the third one was don't criticize, accept. And after 28 days, I'd drawn for 28 days in a row and I couldn't believe how my drawing had changed, how I hadn't missed a day, how much I was learning, how much fun I was having. And so I posted a little, I had a blog going, so I posted a little slideshow to my blog. Now the only problem was the next day I really liked my drawing. It was like, oh, I wish it was in the slideshow. So I thought, well, let me just post it to the blog. So I did. And that was so easy. And I thought, well, this would be a way to help me keep going with this project. And it did. Every day, I would make a drawing, and I would post it. And it kept going. And going. <laughs> and going. And uh, with the same rules, draw every day, don't erase, don't criticize. And today is 3,217 of this project of drawing something every day and posting it to a blog. To give you a sense of scale of what 3,217 days is like, when I got to day 1,000, I made a one minute video.
So there it is. That's my life at one frame a day for 1,000 days. And people ask me, okay, well, so come on, be honest. Have you skipped a day? <laughs> and the answer is no. There have been times when I haven't had internet access, and so I haven't posted the drawings, but I make a drawing every day before I go to sleep. And there have been days when I've been sick, and so what I've been drawn has been a really scribbly picture of a piece of Kleenex. <laughs> and there are other days where people ask me, well, how much time does this take? And there are days where I really do have lots of time. And so I make a drawing, and I can take an hour with it. You know, or I'm in a lovely situation. But most days, I probably don't spend more than 15 minutes. And there are days when really all I spend is 15 seconds. It doesn't take that much. And people ask, oh, well, willpower. You must have incredible willpower. I could, never, I could never do that. I don't have that kind of willpower. It's not, it doesn't take willpower. This is my treat. This is nothing I do in any official capacity in my life. And because I've given myself permission to do it badly, it doesn't matter whether it's any good or not, right? It can just be what it is. It, I can sit down, sit still, look at something, be messy with paint and ink. I can play. I can have fun. It doesn't take any more willpower than it would take to eat a piece of chocolate each night. And over time, I've learned so much from this process, and I keep learning. And it encourages me to take further risks and to take further chances. And as I said, it's just really a lot of fun. So there's so much in our culture that is about excellence. We value excellence. And we particularly value an excellence that seems effortless, right? It's innate. It's a talent. It's a gift that someone has. We're all told if a thing is worth doing, it's worth doing well, right? Well, I'd like to say I'll always be grateful to the English author G.K. Chesterton, who in an essay on amateurism said, if a thing is worth doing, it is worth doing badly. All right. The key is that it's something worth doing. It matters to you. But it's worth doing it badly. So my charge to you today is to go ahead. Go out there and do something badly. If there's something that you want to do, if it's worth doing, if you'd like to play trombone, if you'd like to write poetry, if you'd like to program computers, build mechanical toys, if there are those stories of your parents and grandparents that someone needs to record and you think that someone might be you, just start doing it. Do it badly. But then keep doing it. <coughs> keep doing it. Don't give up. And you could amaze yourself. Thank you.